It's been two weeks since I last touched this project. Um, it, things are exactly as I left them two weeks ago. Last weekend I was uh, busy both days. Uh, the cylinder head, we're still waiting for that, so we can't crack on with that. But what we can do is look at the other things. Uh, we're going to look at the inlet manifold, we're going to look at the alternator, and we're going to look at the ignition switch. So this is our ignition switch from the Land Rover. It's been in there for 10 years now. It is actually a Defender TDI ignition switch, which is very similar to a two and a quarter petrol series ignition switch. Similar in the way the switch gear works at the back here. The difference being that our TDI ignition switch doesn't have the provision for the choke mechanism which is here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this plate off which I've actually already had off once and then decided now I'm going to put it back on. So I'm going to take that off again and I'm going to fit this plate which has been in my box for many many years stored for no apparent reason and this is off of a diesel series Land Rover and the pull control for that is here that's the stop engine stop control so what I need to do is I need to grind these fins out from the inside which will then allow me to fit the choke cable sleeve out of that ignition switch into here because at the minute it doesn't quite go all the way that will allow me to fit that into there and then I need to modify that so I can fit this onto that now you're asking why on earth are you not just using this one because it's the correct one for the job well a couple of reasons one, the steering column lock has seized up solid. Two, the ignition key is stuck in there solid. And I've had mole grips on this. And I promise you, I'm not joking, it is in there. Number three is if you feel the switch positions, it's pretty much worn out. Whereas this one has got a nice firm click with each position. So I'm going to take that top plate off and I'm going to start the modification process to fit this back onto that switch. Right, I've got that lid off so I'm all set up. I've put two marks on one you can't see. There's one there and one round here. Set this up on the milling machine and all I'm going to do is just take that lip off there. There's a mark well, I'll say there's a mark. There's a a ridge in the casting so that's going to be my depth and it's just a case of wing it and see two positions one on the Y
tried that on, I'm fairly confident it fits. All I've got to do now is just remove that bolt there. Alright, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start grinding these ribs out of here and uh, I'm just going to use this die grinder and then just uh, Keep at it like that, I think. Right, so we've now got this choke thingy, cable sleeve, we'll go with that, into this diesel stop control top, and now we need to get this into our TDI ignition switch. Um, I milled that off, you saw that, tighten that screw up that's in there nice and tight and the outer cable will go into there as it would have done on the diesel system so I've got here the finished or partially finished job these parts here where it's cr sort of crimped over um, because I've already had this apart once they're not as good as they might have been um, so I might have to think of something else to actually attach this but for now it is fully working and he says oh, it was, ah there we go look. so yes it's fully working and we've achieved what we wanted to achieve bright and early the following morning actually maybe mid afternoon in fact, it's not even mid-afternoon, it's late afternoon. So, today, obviously, it's pretty much gone. I have just been to a farm, and I've been for some bits. And they're in the back of here. So, what have I bought? I brought a clutch pedal. Another clutch pedal. That's right. Yeah. Both of which are seized up completely solid. I bought a registration plate. Another registration plate. An air filter full of water. Mainly for the pipe. I bought that for the pipe. on there. Now the main thing that I've bought here is this. Absolutely completely knackered, could be repaired quite possibly, lower dash for a Series 3 Land Rover. And I haven't even looked at it. All I want from this is that cable and that's what we're going to do now. We've only got an hour. We've also got the push rods that belong our engine. I was missing them. And these are far from good condition, but I'm going to put them to soak and hopefully they'll come out good. So, here I am. I've got my cable, I've got an 8mm spanner and a posi drive screwdriver, well, multi-chain screwdriver. I'll take these two screws out of here and that should give us all the room that we need. 
And this, doing this, what I'm doing here, is pretty pointless for the simple fact that this is something that will never ever get used because I always, no matter what car I'm driving, I leave the heater on hot. So it's never, never once get used. And also, and also, it's this something. There's another reason why it's why it's absolutely pointless, and I can't remember. But it'll come to me in a sec. So we're going to feed our cable down inside here. It's an idea to do this with the battery disconnected because we have all this is steel. So I'm going to feed that down here following the other cable that we have for the control of the heating system. Just scratch all the paint. So there is a steel plate with a seal behind it, which is where the steering column comes up through. There is a small hole in the bottom right hand corner of that. And that is the hole where this cable is going to go through, I think. Bearing in mind it's oh, on the wrong cable. Bearing in mind it's what? 20, 16 years since I removed the original cable with one evening possibly, I can't remember. And I've got my hand, yes, right. So I can't see anything. I'm using the force. Probably just stood here blocking the camera, so I'm going to professionally move that. These are actually these old cables are far better than any modern cable because they're actually solid steel, like welding wire. And whereas your modern cables are like bike brake cables, and they do have a tendency. To fray up on you. There we go. Right, just want to straighten it up a bit. So I'm now going to reattach that clip up there. Again, I'm just completely blocking the camera. So obviously, all these Land Rovers are Imperial fittings, I just use an 8mm spanner. While this is all in bits, we're just going to come in here with some lubricating oil. Got some uh, GT85 here. Obviously, the next thing up from this is obviously the Toyota version, but uh, this will do me nicely. I'm just, I'm just coming in here like, yeah, that's done. Right, get some WD-40 down that and hopefully it'll lubricate it up a bit, because it is sticking. It's kind of the risk that I took not trying this cable. Well, I did sort of try it.
and using the world's worst version of WD-40. Good for scale electrics. But maybe Land Rover heater control mechanisms doesn't quite work the same. So it might not work 100% at the moment, but at least we have got the look that we wanted. So from the engine bay side, we will see. That cable working. And obviously, the flaps are working fine. Well, we've got another bright and early start for today. It's currently about quarter to twelve. I've just come from a mate of mine's and we've cut down the length of this battery cable. So that's going to go on there. I also have the wire that goes into the electrical system already there. I've got another wire here which needs to be longer but that needs to go into there as well and then I've got the wiring for the uh, to run a wire for the alternator across into that into that loom there. So I think what I will do is just come straight up across and into there. So that's what I'm going to do next. I actually ran this alternator on the 200 TDI conversion setup. Um, it's absolutely caked in oil that the turbo spit out. It's a Lucas alternator, but so it's got the standard connections that a standard alternator would have, like this one we see here. This is a, a standard Land Rover alternator of the 1970s. It doesn't work, so that is out of the question. This one had the constant problem of coming loose, and you can see how the hole has worn oval. So, I don't really know what to do. I'm not really in a position to buy another one because these are actually very expensive being a, an uprated part. So, what I might do is just see how a bolt fits in there. And that's not even worth thinking about if I can find the. It's just too far worn to get a, a decent clamp. So the alternator here, I found some half inch aluminium bar, drilled a hole at 12.5mm and, and warmed this section here up with a heat gun, an electronic heat gun and basically put a dolly underneath there and gently tapped the aluminium bar in with a copper side of mallet. I've then machined this off on a XYZ precision milling machine slash angle grinder and what I'm going to do now is on the same machine I'm going to clock up to that circular impression there, find the centre and drill it. By that I mean centre punch it somewhere central and drill and um, then this should be good to be fitted. It is worth me just mentioning that the problems that I had with the alternator also continued on to the bracket as well. Sorry for the brilliant camera work here. So you can see where I've bushed the bracket exactly the same as what I did with the alternator. Uh, to reclaim the hole size and then just drilled it through. I did do that on a milling machine because um, it was a bit more complicated or oh, and easier to hold. Right, so that's the alternator all bolted and belted up. Um, that's back in its original place. It's gone in there nice and tight. Hopefully it will stay in the correct position this time and not find its way loose. So here we go. 
We have got two wires coming out the back of the alternator. One goes up across there, across there, down into the starter solenoid which is there. Second one comes up across and stops about where does it stop? There. And it's going to join into that blue wire there, which goes into the fuse box, which I've now moved to there. I've put the coil on there, where it should be. And also we have the charge warning light wire, which should be brown and yellow, but is actually, in this case, green and red, because it's all I've had to use. So that's coming up across there, across there like it should, and into the wiring loom there somewhere as with the water temperature wire which is coming across there blah 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 and also the oil pressure which is there warning light should that be that you know what i mean you know what i mean so all i've done is i'm as i'm going along i've just taped each wire together to create a bundle what i'm going to do now is i'm going to remove all of this onto the bench and tape it up all properly and it will look absolutely like a professional job so five minutes, a bit of tape, and we have our completed engine bay loom. It is very important to sort of know what you're doing with this because it's easy to forget what exactly is what if you're not using the correct colours. As I found out a couple of times I was looking at it, what on earth is that for? So even so, it's the, there is not, this is not rocket science, it's just a matter of knowing what you need to connect to what, running it along a path, taping them all together, removing the, the bundle and then taping it up to make it look as it should do. So I'm going to put the ignition switch back on and we're going to try it and see, see what works and see what doesn't. So I've just been trying to get this to work and never occurred to me that the battery might be no good. This is the one that I had in before and obviously I've been saying it's sat for a year. Should still some should still have some charge in it and it wasn't even that old when this thing came off the road. And I better save the receipt. But anyway, it's a nice simple test. Get a heavy duty cable and then flash it over the end there, do this one, I mean this one sat the same amount of time, the car that this come off I've had for probably 14 months now and that is a good battery. So get that on charge and then we'll see if we can... Right so the battery has been boiling for probably an hour now. The ignition switch is back in its place. I did manage to get that back together and secure. It is a bit of a lash up, but even so, if it works, it works. So, get rid of this battery charger. So, this is the first attempt at connecting a live battery. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put positive on first, like I would normally. Like that. And then the negative, I'm going to flash it across. And there are no sparks, so I'm happy to connect that on there. And then we're looking and listening for any thing that potentially might be burning and I can't see it. So first test. Right, so we have got a bit of a problem somewhere. So you heard that clunk, that was the starter solenoid, and the charge warning light came on as I did that. So I'm going to go through some more switches. We've got side lights, we've got headlights, and that one. Check the rears. 
So it's the first time I've powered this up in well over 12 months now. I would try the wipers, but I'm not going to because of the condition of the screen. Um, we'll try the heater. There we go. But you can probably just see that light lighting up there. I don't know why that would be. Another thing that we've got is a lot of pressure warning lights. Which we should have. I've got 